Hey guys, this is Nate Story with Bright Air Tech, and today we're going to talk about T5 fluorescent lights. So a fluorescent light is basically this glass tube with, uh, with a gas inside of it and a filament. So as electricity is passed through uh, this tube, uh, the gas heats up and emits light. And um, so uh, there are lots of different kinds out there, but they all function a similar way. So um, when fluorescent lights first came out, a lot of people were using them in conjunction with incandescent lights for grow lights. And um, there are actually lots of different fluorescent grow lights out there these days. Um, however, uh, there are some that just outperform others. And one of those is the high output T5 light. So uh, when you're looking at purchasing a light, first off, it's really important that you're buying a grow light. There are lots of fluorescent lights out there for interior, uh, for exterior, for all sorts of different applications. Uh, but the ones for growing plants typically have a very specific Kelvin rating. So the Kelvin rating basically describes the, the temperature of the light. And on a T5 like this, you have T5, which basically denotes the size of the tube. That's 5 eighths of an inch. You have 54 watt, which tells you how much electricity it consumes. And uh, it says 6400 Kelvin, which is a pretty cool light, um, cool temperature light. Um, so, you know, it's, it's really important to pay attention to that Kelvin rating specifically to make sure you're getting the right kind of light for the right time in your plant's life cycle and also to ensure you're getting a grow light and not just an off-the-shelf T5. So T5s are a great grow light. Um, they are more efficient in warmer temperatures, so the kind of temperatures you see in a growing environment, they're going to be a little bit more efficient oftentimes than T8s or T12s. They're high output, they're low profile, and um, they generally emit uh, in a range that's a little bit more friendly for most vegetative plant production. So uh, by and large, these are the lights that we really, really like. These lights are really, really great for applications where you don't need tons and tons of light, and you don't need light that has a variable spectrum. So most uh, fluorescent lights tend to be cooler in spectrum. That means more blues, uh, which means you get, you know, in the vegetative stage, you get stockier plants, you get um, kind of more dense vegetative growth, you get more color. But uh, at the same time, these kinds of lights still have limits on how much light they give off which means the kinds of crops that you put under them, uh, you just have to kind of understand uh, what the crop's needs are as far as light goes and make sure you're matching that with this fluorescent light. As great as these things are, they'll never give off as much light as say an HPS, a metal hal halide, or an LED uh, growing fixture of the same wattage. Um, actually, that's not entirely true. So like with a metal halide or, or a high pressure sodium, similar wattage, uh, similar output, but you can just dump a lot more wattage into HPS for a metal halide light. So you can get a lot more light out of it, um, which for high light demand crops means that those lights are great. Similar with the LED fixture, we can tune it up or down and we can deliver an awful lot of light to a relatively small area with an LED grow light. We become a bit more limited when we're talking about big, big numbers from a light application standpoint when it comes to fluorescent. So these are great for seedling, great for cuttings, and great for uh, relatively beginning vegetative stage plant production. These are really, really great hobby lights. Almost everyone uses these lights at hobby stage. Um, I've used them, everyone that I know has used them. They're just a great all around light. They're inexpensive, they work well, and they're actually pretty darn energy efficient comparatively, especially compared to like T8s or T12s. So, um, it's a great, great light. Now, the limitations are when you start to move into really big uh, production environments um, and when you start looking really, really closely at your operating costs. So if you're thinking about a commercial farm, I would think long and hard about putting in fluorescent over, say, something like LED. And the reasoning for that is that fluorescent is a great light at very small scales, but it's still not the most energy efficient. It's limited in its spectrum and it doesn't put off as much light as other options out there. So the big pros about these lights are that they're relatively inexpensive in comparison to something, say, like LEDs. They have a nice low profile, so if you're doing like stacked production or something, these lights slide in and can light uh, beds really nicely. And you know, for what they are, they're pretty darn energy efficient. Um, 
so by and large, they're a great light for smaller applications and uh, applications where you're only doing vegetative crops, you're doing cuttings, you're doing very small plants. Um, the cons are that you still are fairly limited on light output. Like there's just so much light you can get out of these things. They do tend to get pretty hot, hotter typically than LED fixtures uh, get. And um, the temperature is fairly set. So you can get warmer or cooler ones, but you start to sacrifice efficiency as you move towards some warmer um, temperatures with these things. So um, again, just to recap, a great light for small scale production. Uh, but once you start getting bigger and bigger and bigger, you should be concerned about your energy, your light output, and your just overall operational efficiency. And that's the point where you should be moving from something like this to something like an LED fixture. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you guys watch these vid videos with regularity, we would encourage you to post videos, leave comments, interact with us, give us a chance to respond to you guys and um, share even more information with you. So uh, please let us know what your questions are. Please let us know the kinds of uh, things you're thinking about and give us a chance to deliver content that's specifically designed for you. And as always, please subscribe.